For more on water conservation technology, I'm joined by uh, Giulio Boccaletti. He's the manager director, managing director rather, for Water at the Nature Conservancy here in Washington, D.C. Giulio, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So we saw what Las Vegas is doing. What other cities are doing something similar? What are the results? What are the challenges? And who's paying for it? Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing to say is that this is happening uh, across the United States and worldwide. I think this challenge of uh, doing more when you don't have enough is becoming pervasive. And I think we've heard it from Nevada, but to California, to, in fact, outside of the United States, uh, across the world. And there are some cities, indeed, like Las Vegas, who are trying to confront this through innovation. Um, Places like Milwaukee, even, who, which are investing in, uh, in uh, new enterprise, trying to invest in new water technologies, or places like, indeed, you know, Israel or Singapore that have made and have a long track record in trying to invest, uh, invest in water technologies to try and confront this, uh, this issue of water scarcity. So Israel and Singapore, are they leading in new technologies? They are, because they've confronted these problems. They're sort of the canary in the mind for this problem. You know, both uh, Israel and Singapore, for a variety of reasons, historical and physical, have had to confront severe water scarcity for a long time. And the result, you asked for results, well, the result is that they have uh, significant um, economic benefit from the investments that they've made in water uh, enterprise. Um, Singapore, for example, has one of the best uh, water utilities in the world, PUB, that has invested in uh, very advanced uh, systems of water recycling. Israel has uh, produced a technology to uh, improve conservation of water in agriculture. So there are results out there as people invest in solving this problem. Uh, there was a term I kept coming across and I didn't know what it really meant. Mm. So I want you to explain this to us. I learned because I did my research, but perhaps you can tell our viewers. Water desalination. Yeah. What does it involve? And based on what I read, this is an expensive process. It is an expensive process. So desalination, simply put, uh, is uh, taking salt out of salt water and uh, delivering fresh water. You know, you said at the beginning of your piece, most of the, wor the water in the world is salt water, is water in the sea. If you can extract the salts from it, what's left is water that in principle can be drank. The problem, of course, is that that requires enormous amounts of energy to extract these particles. And so it turns out that desalinated water uh, can cost 10 to 100 times what water taken out of the river uh, might cost. And yet there are a number of places around the world that have to rely on this technology to uh, meet their demands. And what are some of those places around the world? Well, of course, uh, most, uh, um, the largest user of desalination is, of course, the Middle East, and particularly the, the GCC, the Gulf countries. Mm -hmm. um, but we're seeing this technology also being used in other parts of the world, Australia, for example, and there have been uh, other parts of the Mediterranean where this technology has been adopted. But I should point out that it is uh, a highly expensive technology, and more often than not, the better answer is efficiency in use, so efficiency in agriculture, or efficiency in cities. The cheapest water you can use is the, is the water that you've saved. And what about investing in developing new technologies? How much of a priority is it in developing countries, many of which, Julio, are dealing with staggering poverty? Yeah, I think that's one of the great challenges. You know, the world spends half a trillion dollars a year on managing water. That's enormous expenditure. It's 2% of global GDP. It's an expensive business. It's large infrastructure. It's pipes. It's a lot of cement. It's dams. It's irrigation systems. And indeed, it's water treatment uh, systems. So it's an expensive business. And for many countries, developing countries in particular, this is something that is hardly affordable. Um, there are solutions. Technologies are getting uh, cheaper and more accessible. Uh, people in uh, developing countries like, or middle-income countries like China or India are experimenting with new ways of servicing the public, particularly in cities, distributed uh, water treatment systems, for example. Um, and so that's another way in which this is managed. But I think that there's also another trend, which is to make water treatment cheaper, you have to avoid polluting it and misusing it at the source. And so part of the technology answer, if you will, is actually better management upstream, better investment in watersheds, in forests, in the rivers that we depend on. And can technology play a role when we're talking about parts of the world that are very scarce, they don't have clean drinking water, and can it play a role in alleviating poverty, Julia? 
So I think it, it can play technology, technologies like desalination, technologies like reuse, for example. Uh, can, I mean, water is just so basic. It is very basic. It is very basic. And, um, you know, the, the biggest problem, if I were to put a hierarchy of problems, the first problem is uh, using less water, more productive water in agriculture. There's so much water used in agriculture. A small saving there can satisfy the needs for water for people in most places. Once you've exhausted that opportunity, then you have to ride up this steep cost curve of new technologies that deliver additional water. And desalination is possibly the most expensive. And unfortunately, that's where the poor of the world get trapped, right? And so it's so essential to become more efficient with the use of water precisely for that reason. And advice, good advice for all of us. Conserve water. Yeah. Thank you so much, Giulio Boccaletti. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.